Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, October 7th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Andy Holloway with you today. And another week to react to. We've got studs and duds on the show today. We've got NFL news. we got ah, injuries to talk about. This feels like a really big studs and duds week like you had some monstrous performances like extreme production and then you have some of the most started players failing miserably yeah we got one more game left in week five and I'm thinking tomorrow on the show after we conclude week five in its entirety I want to go through the top five at every position tomorrow I want to look at who's there five weeks into the season, and then I want to ask you whether you think they stick around or, or they finish within about five spots of where they are today because, you know, we've got some data at this point in time. And we had expectations for certain players this week that did and didn't deliver. We're getting into all of it today. I want to invite everybody to check out jointhefoot.com if you want to join an incredible community of fantasy football players, the Foot Clan, you can find out details at jointhefoot.com. You get an extra episode of the show every week, Premium Tools, the Ultimate Dashboard, which is coming very soon to a mobile device near you as well. And um, the website's thefantasyfootballers.com for all of our rankings and, and everything. The great articles by the great writing staff that we have assembled um, by sheer luck. <laughs> I, I Slash Kyle. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Kyle's done great work. Um. Brooks would like us to know that we're doing a fantasy draft redo on Wednesday. Those, so, those are super fun, and that that kind of in part does what yeah. you're, what, what you're talking about, where you, you're going to do it over. If, if we were to do the draft today, who's the first pick, who's so maybe, the second, et cetera. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll save those, those numbers for Wednesday, but that should be fun. Uh, we do react to the weekend in the only way we know how, which is to put the word out <laughs> to the foot yeah. plan, get sophisticated with some Monday Punday. And we'll kick it off with uh, Brock Powers. Oh, Dude. baby. First he touchdown. Good. First touchdown. He's good. Uh, Darnell Money. Yeah, Rico. Mike's not here. Oh, it's such a shame. I know. This was his. Rico Waddle. Oh, thanks, Bigsby. <laughs> oh, great. So I get yeah. T.D. Higgins. <laughs> uh, you got Kraft Mac and TDs. Yeah, he double, double <laughs> TDs. Uh, Flying Thomas Jr. Oh, check in at the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> so dumb. dumb. Uh, DJ, more of that, please. <laughs> Whoa, Flacco. But all it right. wasn't all good, Andy. No, it wasn't, and uh, that's why we have Dontavian Eck. Oh, he was the worst this week. Dontavian whiffs. And then, of course, Devon Aikpain. <laughs> Mark Blandrews. Hey, he had he had catches this week. He did have catches. Such a high bar for him. Uh, Xavier Regrets. I like that. Bree Small. Uh, Debo Shamuel. George picking someone else for my team. Uh, and Cortland, nothing. Starvin Harrison Jr. And right after the yeah, sacrificial yeah, baby. of course. He's now Benedict Darnold. Oh, hungry for more. And finally, David Njoku's on you. Oh. That's really not fair. because really the Njoku's on you. Yeah, but, okay. Yeah, yeah. You do it. <laughs> he, uh, if, if you're not familiar uh, with his work this week, he... Uh, caught the first pass on the first play of the game and then uh, played more snaps but got injured. Yeah, it was a knee injury, though. It wasn't a re-injury, which is really a shame. He's going to get an MRI today. And, like, he had just talked about how upset he was that he had been missing time. So it's always hard when that happens. That does feel like like it's it's unfortunate. It's not his fault. I don't ever want to shame an injury. But it does feel like a, a jokes-on-you situation where it's like, I'm back. Ha-ha, <laughs> gotcha. 
Yeah, I was I was uh I was benching this week to see cuz we knew the snap counts would be limited, but you never know if a player's like compensating for an injury too and that's how they get hurt again. Yeah, I I didn't see the play where where he got injured, but uh obviously we'll we'll find out more this week. I on... don't recommend watching that game. I don't think you want to watch Cleveland's Holy offense. Holy moly. Why I mean every time we would look over to the Browns TV, it was like just put a sheet on it. Put it like Turn, oh yeah, pull the sheet over. It just, just it's done. I can't watch Voldemort play football anymore. And they Is came that out football. And, That's football. What he's doing? He's, he's trying. Uh, the, the head coach came out and said he is the quarterback. He who shall not be named uh, will continue being our starting quarterback, which means the Browns' offense will continue to suck. Yeah, and and Amari Cooper will continue to get ten to twelve targets and catch four of them because he got five catchable. He'll yeah. drop one. He'll drop one. He'll catch four, and he'll be targeted 10 to 15 times. It, it, it's very difficult to watch. They could use Joe Flacco. Yeah. I mean, the teams that could use Joe Flacco right now, there the, are more than one. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was reported that those are the exact teams that turned Joe Flacco down this offseason before he went to the Colts like the Miami Dolphins. I, I mean, the Miami Dolphins have Devon Achan. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. You put Joe Flacco there, and this team is just marching towards the playoffs. Yeah, and Jalen Waddle would be fine, and Tyreek would be great, and HM would be great, and yeah, Joe Flacco's insane. a leader. Insane, insane when you have a and quarterback he with the known three hundred. Yeah, I mean he's he's great. I I love him. I hope. So what do you do? I mean, it, let's just talk about it for two seconds because we know. I I, I think Indianapolis can win. Mm-hmm. Their chances to win are better with Joe Flacco right now, but their future is not Joe Flacco at all. And it's not like Richardson's not going right back into the lineup, but what a weird place to be as a team where you know your chances to win go down and you continue to make that decision. Yeah, I mean, the whole world knows it. The whole world knows that the team operates better, the offense operates better, the wide receivers have more success with Joe Flacco than with Anthony Richardson. Um, obviously – they are not a team in a championship window yet. They are building to the future, and that's not what you know. Old man Joe Flacco is going to provide you. So they do need to build the team around Anthony Richardson. I think that's what I would do as a general manager. What you'd hope to do at this point now is put Anthony Richardson behind someone like Joe Flacco, but they can't do that anymore. You no, can't you go can't do backwards. That. No, you can't. It, Jacoby Brissett got the start, so he can keep starting. Exactly. But, um, yeah, just a flashback. Joe Flacco last year, uh, his final four regular season games, 31 points, 20 points, 36 points, 37 points with Cleveland. They won all four games. Yeah. They won all four of those games, and he was a top-10 quarterback in all four of those games, including number one overall in week 16. Let him, so, let him go. Let him cook, man. Goodness. All right. Let's kick it off. Welcome to Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. All right, ready to roll today. We're looking for those. Um, we're always looking for the little edges in fantasy football, but five weeks in, it's it's fun to take a look at where teams are at this juncture of the season. And so today we want to look a little bit at pace of play and what teams are very fast paced so far this year, what teams are slow and how that impacts fantasy football. Now, there are about there are three or four different ways to look at pace of play. You can look at the totality of plays per game, um, just raw total plays that can get distorted by overtime games or maybe weird game scripts where the defense scores and the offense doesn't have the ball a lot. Um, you can look at seconds per play, so teams that are leaving a bunch of time on the play clock that are um, you know, running no huddle, which is another way to look at it because you're going to get more plays – in a game when you are running no huddle, more opportunities for fantasy obviously come along with running more plays, so it's very, very important. And then probably the most ideal in the way that we like to look at it, what is the neutral pace of a team? What are their seconds per play when they are within one score of the other team? And they're not – yeah, the, we look at that for pace of play. We also look at that for pass rate. That's – you know, obviously if you're down two scores and it's the fourth quarter – and clock's running out, you can't run the ball anymore. You've got to throw the ball. So at the end of the game, you look back and you're like, oh, they threw the ball a lot. 
It's like that's not what the team wants to do. If if the team is up, if the team is just in a in a battle, those type of things. Neutral game script is probably the most indicative of future uh, happenings. Yeah, the most predictive. Yeah, I agree. There is an article coming out on the site today if you want to dig in deeper than what we talk about here. And the article is called Defining Pace of Play and Why It Matters. We also do a weekly Pace of Play article on the DFS Pass. But I want to highlight three fast-paced teams through five weeks and, and a couple, two, three slower-paced teams so that you have an idea of maybe where we're headed. Because at a minimum, this gives us a little bit of a predictive analysis on is what you're seeing going to keep happening on some of these teams or inversely when you're waiting for somebody to perform, do they really have a chance to right. perform moving forward? I think so that I think one is maybe even more important for fantasy. Like it's pretty easy to stay in the flames of someone on fire. It's like we're the first team we're going to talk about here is the commanders. Yeah. They're just, they're just unstoppable. I mean, their offense through uh, the first month of the season is – almost unstoppable. No one's been able to slow them down. Extreme fast pace of play. If you got Jaden Daniels in your lineup, you've been starting him. But prescriptive wise, guess what? Keep keep starting Jaden Daniels. Like that's you don't need to be told. No, no, but you can be excited about the fact that they're number one in no huddle rate. They are no huddle more than fifty percent of the time this year. It's what Cliff did in Arizona, but he's doing it to an even greater extent now in Washington. Um, with the amount of scrambles by Jaden Daniels on top of the fast pace of play, it's exciting for Terry McLaurin's potential to be valuable on a week to week basis and maybe somebody else emerging on a week to week basis, whether that ends up being, you know, Zach Ertz one week and Diami Brown another week or whatever the case may be. Yeah. The no huddle has been certainly working well, keeping the defenses uh, from adjusting and they, I mean, Cliff Kingsbury has four of the six fastest no huddle or, or highest rate of no huddle teams since 2016. And this version is faster than any of his Arizona Cardinal versions. Another team playing very fast, at least the last two weeks, the Indianapolis Colts, number two this year in seconds per play, nine in no huddle rank. But it has been a very big contrast going from Richardson to Flacco. Last year, they were very up-tempo with Gardner. First three weeks of the year, um, not the case in the plays per game tally because they weren't having as much success either with Anthony Richardson. But the last two weeks, um, plays per game have gone way up, 64 and 69 under Flacco. They were in the 40s and 50s under Richardson. So we, I guess we know with Indianapolis what they want to do, but they're just having more success doing it with Joe Flacco in terms of sustained drives, Completed passes, third downs picked up, yeah, I mean, and more I, plays per game. I would love to see. I, it's. I. I also think it's not necessarily just what they want to do, but what matches their personnel. Like they're slowing it down with Anthony Richardson because you know he isn't going to be the stand in the pocket and make all the quick throws and and uh, you know short screen plays and get to the line. Like that's. I. I. You know. I think Steichen is doing a good job matching his personnel, um, but he matches better. I feel like with these uh, these quick quick passing uh, quarterbacks, and then uh, three other teams that are playing very fast: uh, the Cowboys, number one in seconds per play, so they're playing very fast. Ninth overall in total plays. Seattle, third in seconds per play, and um, these are two teams, both of them in the top five in pass percentage, pass rate. So. Very good signs for, you know, we just saw Jalen Tolbert have a big game. And Brandon Cooks is missing time. Yeah. And they pass the ball almost more than anybody in football and, and have more plays, and their defense isn't very good. So, like, Jalen Tolbert as a streaming option moving forward could be interesting. Or Jake Ferguson as we continue to endorse him. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw last year the involvement and the touchdown, um, uh, the, the touchdown frequency for Brandon Cooks. So if he's gone, obviously that role is important to to Dak and to the Cowboys. The the Seahawks offense has just been a delight uh, with the changeover, leaving Shane Waldron. But ironically, Shane Waldron's led Bears. Hey, they came to life a little bit this week. And that that's an interesting discussion because they're number two in no huddle rate this year. They're number seven in seconds per play. And they're number five in total plays run. And then they had this big breakout game 
where the passer rating for Caleb Williams has increased every week of the season, or I think the first two weeks were very similar, but then the past two have been very good. Going into week five, great performance. Oh, DJ was, Moore was great. He looked so good, and his, his ability with his legs, it was great. Now, you got to you got to pump pump the brakes, you know, a little bit, and say, okay, this is the Carolina Panthers. Like so far, everyone, Carolina pump. Yeah, the Carolina pump. Thurs. Uh, so just you know, don't get don't get too crazy excited. That being said, Jacksonville Jaguars are the next matchup. Then the Commanders. Then the Arizona Cardinals. So yeah, and those are seasonal ranks in terms of the no huddle rank and the plays per game. So maybe they were underwhelming a little bit, and there's a medium, median between the two. Uh, slow pace teams. This is where it gets more interesting yeah. to me because there are two teams that I want to highlight here that have been fantasy football juggernauts for years that may need to be reclassified. We began the process of reclassification when we said trade away. We did a couple Patrick weeks ago Mahomes. with Mahomes. We said, look, this is not an every week starter. The way they're they're running their offense, it, it, th there's a streaming candidate and it's not even a good streaming candidate usually in Mahomes. But we see that with when you look at the pace of play, that kind of that kind of highlights 20th in total plays per game, 30th in no huddle rank for the Chiefs, 20th in seconds per play. They are methodical. They are throwing their pass rate above expectation was always six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent higher than the league average. This year it is the league average. Yeah, gross. Which and, means you're not throwing it as much and you're not having running as many plays. And losing Rushy Rice and even even losing Isaiah Pacheco, I think that is just going to continue to slow the offense down and win more uh, grueling battles. But the other team here who ranks thirty first in plays 25th in seconds per play 23rd in no huddle 26th in pass percentage rank and has been pretty putrid the last two weeks what do we make of the buffalo bills it's a problem it's a problem they they don't have reliable pass catchers it seems outside of shakir who missed this game they're methodical they're running the football fewer total opportunities um seventh in rush rank this season, and this is just a continuation of what we saw under Joe Brady last year where they were 31st in pass rate. So this this year they're 26th. Um, but last year at least they were number one in plays per game. Now they're, what are they, 31st? Yeah. So uh, this is when you when I look at the game and I'm like, I want opportunities for Dalton Kincaid, right? Mm -hmm. Every time I look at the screen, they, I, I where are they? Uh, they're on the bench, and their yeah, defense they're is not, on the field. They're not playing. So part of that is the the Bills' rush defense has been very, very poor. And so when other teams are able to stay on the field a long time and control the, I mean, if I'm playing against the Bills, I want to keep Josh Allen on the sideline. Um, uh, and I guess unless it was this last week, I would have wanted him out there. You you realize how bad he was? Nine for thirty. That's a thirty. Was nine for thirty. Nine for he threw the ball thirty times. He completed nine of those thirty percent completion rate. We did just talk about like the lows for Josh Allen are lower than they've ever been in terms of the fact that he's got two sub ten point weeks. My uh, what what was his fantasy output this week? Fourteen fantasy points. Yeah, I mean that's not he did have. A, that means there's three weeks where where he's been disappointed yeah I mean right now he's the quarterback 19 on the week with uh, still a game to go so he's uh, you know this was obviously a bust week last week was a bust week week two was a bust week so two good games three bad games and the pace of play and the way they want to continue to run the ball it's scary especially when you factor in the fact that they don't have they don't have a wide receiver no they, they, nine they for could, 30 they is could really use to fond eggs Jets next week Tennessee Seattle so Next three matchups, not cakewalks at all on the defensive side of the football. Um, one touchdown pass over the last two weeks for Josh Allen. You got – when he came out in week one, because uh, I'm going to point this out, You your prediction on Josh Allen at the live show was hero to zero on the basis that he would start hot and slow down. His first week in the season, despite the fact you said that, the way that you said it, 
you got a lot of grief from him being number one overall quarterback as though your projection <laughs> said he was, was gonna, every week. I said he was going to get off to a hot start. And he, he did. But then it's been slow, and the and the, the low is lower, and it's not working to have, you know, Keon Coleman got hit in the back of the helmet. Oh, my gosh. If you haven't seen this play, it is the funniest play. I mean, you want to talk about a, a, a good pass. Um, it is. It, I've never seen someone hit in the back of the helmet by their quarterback. He he got targeted I mean, and thrown exactly to him, and he it's not like he didn't get his head around in time. He never thought about maybe he was going to get the ball passed he, to him. It, it's hard to be on the same page with Matt Collins, Curtis Samuel, and Keon Coleman, who made a great play in the game, scored a touchdown, um, outran the coverage. Credit due. He's the best of what they got right now. But, like... This is not an offense that is going to be predictive in terms of like these numbers, these background numbers are telling you what you are seeing on the field. So Buffalo and Kansas City are kind of red alerts right now in terms of the offensive side. And then three other teams, I mean, not surprising, dead last in the NFL in plays per game, the Chargers. They want to put you to sleep. The Saints, you know, the hot start, but they're, Almost dead last in pass rank. They are dead last in pass rank. So, you know, Olave, Shahid, I'm sorry. It's a little bit concerning. And maybe that's why they're mentioned with Devontae Adams right now is because they don't right. They don't like what they got. All right, that was Ready to Roll presented by Nissan and the all-new reimagined Nissan Kicks. Take on the city and rain or shine with a bold new Nissan Kicks intelligent all-wheel drive. Head over to NissanUSA.com to learn more. Intelligent all-wheel drive cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. We'll take a break, then we'll hit the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We do get a football game between the Chiefs and the Saints tonight, both that fit in that slow pace of play category. Probably not going to get the Ravens Bengals game no. oh, man, or the Tampa awesome. Bay Atlanta game we got on Thursday. Yeah, the over under right now is set at 43 for tonight's matchup. I think that feels probably about right. Feels right. But the real question is will we be putting another sticker on the bald headed thermometer behind you? Nope. No, they, no. The Chiefs are seven and a half point favorites. They won't win by that, I don't think, but they will win. All the right. refs will make sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the news for the day, Rashi Rice. We got news this morning from Adam Schefter that the Chiefs remain hopeful that he can return this season and maybe miss six to eight weeks. He still needs to undergo a knee scope to confirm any optimism. Yeah, that's such a weird thing to me. Like They, they don't know, and no new information has come out. Aren't and so all they're teams reporting. Hopeful? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're reporting that they're hopeful. Like me too. Yeah, me me too. I'm I'm hopeful that uh, Puka comes back and dominates. When I he's mean, back. like David Njoku is getting an MRI. Oh, Imagine I the Browns come out and go, "We're really pessimistic, and we hope it doesn't turn out good." Right. Yeah, that makes no sense. So, um, okay, I hope he's back too. The Rams are targeting a week seven return for Cooper Cup. That's great. Post that, buy. Yep, that means four weeks, but only three games missed because they have that buy. That'd be great. That'd be big time. Aaron Jones left early with a hip injury, did not come back into the Vikings game. They, I, I will say this. I mean, I don't know how much of it was just early game script, like what you've seen with Kyler where he's he's great and scripted, and then as the game goes on, not as good. Darnold looked amazing to start the game and then kind of collapsed. Losing Aaron apart. Jones was a big point. But that is yeah. the point. It's like I think Aaron Jones is more important to this offense than – we realize because his efficiency has has really opened things up. They were seven. They were up seventeen points, and driving when Ty Chandler fumbled the football and turned the game around. And then the Jets almost came back to win. Devon A. Chan, Jason, your season. Oh of, my goodness gracious! I mean, this was this was a you know this was a subplot for Devon A. Chan going into the year was the injury prone situation, but this was a concussion. They have a week six bye coming up next week. We would hope HM would be back after, but Mostert is back. I think Jalen Wright's looked very impressive. Yeah, Jalen Wright's been good. Mostert is back. I think they're you could play them. It's 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 actually really helpful that he's on bye week right now because usually with a concussion, you see these players miss one week. Um, that's 
certainly not always, but so that'll be nice that maybe you don't miss a game with him. Other other than so the he one he missed yesterday. Right, yeah, yesterday he he hurt you bad. And he planned but he planned his concussion well, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, "Oh, I got a bye week next week. Let me run recklessly this week." I uh, speaking of reckless, Nico Collins ran too fast yeah. on his 70 something yard touchdown yesterday. He left with a hamstring injury, did not come back it day was, to day. It was a really great route. The route was go long. <laughs> it really it was there just was, run as was, fast as you can. There was no hitch, no giddy up, no shake my head this way. It was just like just run like your force gump and and then at the end of that play where he caught the seventy yard touchdown, he's like, I overdid it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it reminded me of Mike Evans. He did that. He used to run long score and then hurt his hamstring yeah hopefully he is uh back this week because man alive is he good i was wondering when i watched the panthers game why i saw so much jonathan mingo and now i know i did not see the injury when it happened but xavier Leggett hurt his shoulder and um will be available they say in week six got banged up people were taking a chance on him this week and the injury hurt them we talked about Nijoku. he'll get an mri on the knee injury um Dude, what happened? I'll just say that gross negligence is what happened with Josh Allen. Josh Allen, if if you didn't if you didn't see, he got hit, slammed his head on the ground. I mean, it was probably got knocked out. Yeah, he probably got knocked out because I mean, his hand like folded in under himself. He didn't even like move. His body it. wasn't moving. He, I mean, it was he he was clearly out. And then when he got checked. He came right back into the game and th it, because they said it was a chest injury or something. Yeah, and then they gave him a smelling salt Yeah, for I the mean, chest, Yeah, yeah. which yeah. I've never done. I, you know, I've oh, always my knee. <laughs> give, 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 give me, ah, my knee. give me the smelling salt. I mean, that was that – was, We uh, still have some of those, Al? We got smelling salts? Yeah, we got some right here. Because I've got a sore – Yeah, I'm going to need one of those. Can you throw one in here? I my you. stomach – my belly's hurting. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, Jason ate some bad food. Yeah. Let me crack one of those. My understanding is that these work for everything. <laughs> oh, Andy went hard after it. Oh, that's a good one for the I went, YouTube. I went way too close. Goodness gracious. Oh, okay. oh man. I can see the future. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, enjoy, man. Oh, I can taste oh. my brain. <laughs> All okay, right. I forgot we still had those, but goodness, I'm awake. But yeah, I mean, it's one of the. It was one Teddy of those. Teddy Bridgewater, where about three or four years ago, he got hit in the end zone. He didn't get knocked out. He got hit in the head. He was pulled from the game. This is, you know, probably during one of the weeks the NFL wanted to be safe. Mm -hmm. Never got to play again from the first quarter. Got knocked out. Never got, you know, I mean, he got pulled out. Never right. got knocked out. This was just our – it's one of our best players, so he can play. Yeah, that's what it felt like. It was, you know, important end of game and, and whatever. Although, they, uh, man, the Bills threw that game away. Literally. It, <laughs> it literally, yes, literally threw the game threw away. It away. It was some of the – the Bills are teetering right this moment. The Jets will be a tough matchup. That would be three straight losses. The coaching – it's very it's questionable situation right now. Yeah. Um, Zach Moss got his uh, he injured his ankle. Aaron Rodgers the knee and ankle he was crawling on the ground in pain. We got word that Romeo Dobbs decided to skip practice oh. a couple times and then get suspended. Yeah, Aaron, just uh, sorry about your knee and ankle, but I just want to let you know <clears throat> that when when you make bad plays, is not someone else's fault. Just sometimes, at least. Sometimes, just so you know, n not everything bad is happening to you, you whiny little baby. I can't stand watching him play football anymore. And he's done it for years. I, I've always been – no one has enjoyed watching him whine after every miss throw. But, you know, like, like why was the wide receiver having a problem? You're overthrowing guys. You had three interceptions. Three interceptions. You played like crap. Yeah, and yeah then, you play the garbage. And then after every bad throw, you're like, why did, why did this happen to me? Oh, I, I'm going to hit my leg. I'm and then he goes to press cry. conferences and says, well, that's one way to do it. Or we could just hold them accountable. And it's like, hold yourself accountable. I think it's fair to have a moment with Aaron Rodgers because none of us are rooting against the good offense in New York. No. We would like to see it work. Have you seen Brees Hall lately? 
No, Brees has been a problem. I mean, the, Garrett Wilson had a breakout game. That was beautiful. But to Aaron, see. Aaron Rodgers, his like, where, where, where does the Steve Nash leadership from Aaron Rodgers like give everybody a high five even when they mess up? How about you go over to the sideline and encourage somebody? Maybe they're dropping passes because they're terrified that you're going to bitter beer face them. Yeah, I mean, there's a time where a player needs a bitter beer face. It can't possibly be every time. No, it just it can't, can't, it be, can't every be every time. And you threw picks like where somebody needs to go bitter beer face him. Yeah. Yeah, Sal is terrified of him. That guy's not a head coach. No. All right, no quarterback announced for the Raiders after their loss. They brought Aiden O'Connell into the game. Um, They'll This switch. game, this game was crazy point. because they came out, a monster touchdown by Brock Bowers. Then they moved the ball again against Denver. We've been talking about Denver's defense, how uh -huh. great it is. Then they move the ball again, they get a field goal. Then they move the ball all the way down to like the ten. And I'm com I I hop into our company Slack and I'm going, what is going on with the Denver defense? These guys suck today. I go, apparently they stink against the and the next play, Patrick Sertan, hundred yard return for a touchdown, and then they shut it down. Yeah, from that point on, they they only gave up eighteen total points in the game and are a great defense, it turns out. Man, I have wondered like when these teams are so good during the scripted portion of the play. Uh, oh, uh, oh the, yeah, because what coaches, why not just script more? <laughs> you, ever, you ever thought about, like, instead of scripting the first 15 plays, scripting, I don't know, 100 20, plays. 25? 50, like, just, yeah, at I mean, least the, for the teams, like, the, the Cardinals, I think Kyler needs it scripted. Yeah, they start, they scored again on their first drive. I mean, um, I mean, team coaches will tell you, I mean, it's about reaction at that point in time, right? The game flow, things changing, but what if you had, like, a backup script, though? Right, Like, if yes. you wanted to, can you script the first drive of the second half? Can you script drives for situations? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, we're going to do the down oh, by 10. You we're going to do, do the down by 10 script. Yeah. And then everyone pulls that script out. And knows their lines. Yeah. All right. Uh, Deshaun Monson is going to remain the quarterback of the Cleveland Brown Pants. That sucks. That I mean, sucks it, because they have someone behind them that can I have been an complete passes. I've been an apologist for Stefanski and the Browns. What they did last year with four different quarterbacks – I thought was un absolutely incredible. Oh, coach of the year stuff. And they could do it this year if they used four different quarterbacks. Well, no Nick Chubb in the offense, no David Njoku in the offense, no offensive line. And no quarterback. I can already hear every single person listening to this show right now that wants to still apologize for the Browns will tell me their offensive line makes it impossible for Deshaun Watson to do anything competent. And on some level – that is a piece of the poop pie uh -huh. that is being baked in you, Cleveland. When you look and you see the corn, you know, and you're like, that's what I ate. Oh, gosh. That's like, okay, the offensive line is a part of that poop. I see it's it. The it's in there. the corn in the feces of the Browns. Yeah, but the Browns' primary ingredient here in the is fecal matter. Sean Watson. Yeah. And at least half of his sacks are 100% on him. Yeah, he has a, he has a mindset that be, when, when the going gets tough – I'm going to hold the ball and run around. Right. Instead of get the ball out quick, adjust the offense. Take off even. Listen to his coach, you know, not walk off the field on a fourth down. It puts Amari Cooper into a might-be-traded-very-soon category, which, look, if you're looking to find the fantasy value of the story, Jerry Judy, when Cooper leaves, probably somebody you want on a roster. Especially if Najoku is not coming back. I mean, we were talking about this yesterday. We – I would be, right now, if I had to put a dollar on, is, does Amari Cooper finish the season as a Brown or not? I would say no. Um, he's it, still got it, too. He's still getting open. Like it, Oh, for sure. He's He he can help a team. Um, and so it, I think the Browns are waiting to see how their season goes. And as they get closer one to and the four. trade deadline. Um, Philly, Cincinnati, Baltimore. Those are your next three weeks for the Cleveland Browns. So, in Philly, Cincy, Baltimore. That'll be some tough sledding. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's talk about some positive things. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. By the way, all three of Watson's interceptions were from a clean pocket, so. Offensive line. Yeah, just the corn. 
just the corn. All right, studs this week at quarterback. We saw Kirk Cousins go absolutely insane on Thursday, and Joe Burrow said, uh, hold my beer because I'm going to throw five Dude. touchdowns. Oh, my gosh. Almost 400 yards. Um, just he, he That played, game was awesome. He played near perfect and lost. Um, oh, man. Yeah, that was disappointing for them. They Aren't they 1-4 and four now? Yeah, I think so. They're they're uh they're going to have a really really tough time making the playoffs. It's not impossible. I but I do think maybe with their defense it's impossible. That game. Like they still have to win games. If you were facing somebody like I was that had oh. <laughs> members of the Bengals or members of the Ravens, uh-huh. That game felt like it had 11 quarters. And I know that it technically had 5, but it felt like it never ended and the drives were they were quick hitters. It's amazing for a game of football what two big plays will do on oh, either yeah. side of the football. If you score quickly, it changes the whole game in terms of just plays per game, opportunities. Yeah, the Burrow, I mean, either either stack. If you had uh, T. Higgins with multiple touchdowns or if you had Chase with multiple bomb touchdowns um, and you stacked them with Joe Burrow, great. Remember, we talked about the Baltimore Ravens defense, which is a very good defense, but they have turned into a pass funnel. It's very hard to run on them. Um, you want to target them in the passing game, and this was obviously a, a, a good time for Joe Burrow until been, the loss. It would have been smarter of them to become a run funnel during the Zach Moss time right? instead of the Chase Higgins-Burrow situation, but they did win, and Lamar... Oh, just as good. Lamar was awesome. He's the quarterback one on the year right now, constantly escaping. Um, 26 for 42, 348 and 4. Charlie Kohler, what's up? Ran for 55! 55 yards on the ground. Incredible week by Lamar. And, um, you know, they, that's where the Andrews discussion is going to become interesting because 348 and four in a game that wasn't the game script where they just hand the ball off to Derrick Henry. Uh huh. I believe Andrews was four for 55 or something like that. But he he didn't have a catch I think until the late third or early fourth. No, it, it felt it felt very very worrisome. He I mean, did if get Kohler involved. has two touchdowns, that's a problem. Yeah, well, there was and, also and, one and big, likely had two touchdowns. There was a, a is that four touchdowns from non Andrews tight ends? Did Kohler have two? He had a, maybe he didn't have the second one. Maybe it was a he, long he had catch. A, he had a bomb catch. He's eighty eight, right? Isn't he number eighty eight? Eighty eight years old. <laughs> right. I think he's number eighty eight. Yeah. And I just I mean it just looked like Andrews. It was like his role and in the same kind of route that Andrews always runs and he caught it and it was this bomb play. And then talking it was talking like, about right tackle, Mark yeah. Andrews. Yeah. Oh, man, Joe Flacco, big game. We talked about it. It's awesome. He, uh, Kevin Durant's tweet was great. Said put Flacco anywhere and he's going to hoop. I mean, because <laughs> he, he just does Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray ran for 83 yards. He also had a huge 50 plus yard touchdown on a scripted run. Thank goodness. This yeah, was a first drive script. Yeah, right. A first drive script. But it, it was one of those things where I'm glad that the offense of the Cardinals and, and the offensive coordinator, you know, they're, they're going to make adjustments every week. The previous week when he stunk, he had three rushing yards and it was clear in this game that, I mean, I mean, it was like let's use his legs. It was very it's a weapon, and they won. They won in San Francisco, which was amazing. Caleb Williams had a monster day, uh, three hundred four and two. Ran it a little bit. He's improved every week. He's getting things together, and it's not a surprise that you know as as receivers are getting healthier, using Cole Komet when he needs to. Um, it's good to see Baker Mayfield on Thursday cooked, Who? cooked as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that would have been sure. uh, Laser what? Mayfield. Thank you. Really only had a first half, but he was great in running the football. Oh, and my man, my dynasty start this week. The fact you knew that this day was coming where <laughs> you would have Jalen Hurts on by and Bo Nix was going to be your starter. Bo Nix. And you were dreading the day, and here he goes for three total touchdowns. Yeah, it's a single quarterback league, and I, I literally only have uh, the Broncos quarterbacks and Jalen Hurts on the roster. So I was like, well, I'm playing Bo Nix this week, and he goes off. Should have had a fourth. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my dude, Troy Franklin, fifty yard, wide open. I you don't get more wide open than that. We took a look at the standings this morning. Jason and I have have, have a nice hundred dollar bet on Marvin Mims versus Troy Franklin, who would have the most <laughs> fantasy points of the year. Right now, it's, it's I was on the Mims side. I'm on the Troy Franklin side in a half PPR scoring. My guy has five point 
four fantasy points on the season. But your, your guy has five point eight. So it's <laughs> anyone's game. It's pretty exciting. Um Trevor Lawrence looked pretty good. Twenty eight for thirty four, three seventy one and two. Got a monster touchdown to Brian Thomas Jr. And then Jaden Daniels, eighty two more on the ground. Jaden Daniels is um his ability he's a, he's to a monster. escape what looks like sure tackles or pressure is it, it's it's very 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 Lamar esque where it's just these little side steps. little side steps where it's like you just don't think you can get out of it and then boom you're out of it uh, he's been a revelation this year at running back my guy <laughs> that's right your guy Tank Bigsby. 13 for 101 and 2. Played more snaps than ETN. ETN only played 38% of the snaps. He is at 8 a carry. And Doug he Peterson said, look, he's not replacing Travis at the top of the depth chart. ETN did show up on the injury report midweek. People want to know if we're going to be panicking about Travis ETN. And I think the uh, answer is like. I don't think panic is right because he is their starter. He's going to have good games. He's going to be important for fantasy. He's going to be started. Um, I think what the truth is, is he's not a guy that's going to be doing what he did last year, spe specifically the first half of last year, where he's out there for 75 plus percent of the snaps. You're getting 90 percent of the work. You're getting everything. Tank has been good. He had two runs in this game. One was his long touchdown run that was outstanding. And that wasn't his best run of the game. They had a play down nearest the goal line. I don't know whether they like 10, 12 yards out. And it's just like a run up the middle into traffic. M bunch of guys around him tackling him. No, he's not down yet. He just keeps going. The pile's moving. He breaks free. The other guys are trying to tackle him. The whole team comes in. I mean, it just never stopped until he was in the end zone. Six attempts for Travis Etienne for 17 yards, but six he, six catches. Yeah, he was, he was very but, involved in the passing game. Uh, we saw... I think the Rico Dowdle breakout game. Holy Mike, dude, the stubborn I, it, Mike that he is. I don't know if I. Oh. <laughs> oh, interesting. Tell me about the walrus and why that applies to Rico Dowdle. You see, what happened, Jason, is that the walrus icon uh -huh. on my board is very similarly colored as the Jay Grizz. <laughs> uh. And I, so I pushed the walrus. So, I pushed the walrus button, and not every show has a walrus button. But we do. Let me ask you, because you and I have both been critical, critical of Rico Dowdle, and and I've I've been, um, I would say a firm believer that he doesn't have the 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 talent to actually have the breakout game, and I'll take the L. Are you happy or are you sad that Mike is not here? I'm happy he's not here. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's for the me best. Uh, Twenty for eighty-seven, four point four. He'd be carry. taking his shirt off right now, and I'd be pretty uncomfortable. Yeah, he'll be here the rest of the week, unfortunately. And <laughs> I'm, I'm well, pretty then I'm sure gone. he will get a Dowdle tattoo by the end of the week. Oh, DeAndre Swift was very, very good. Check this out, Andy. Uh, guess who played against DeAndre Swift in three leagues? You did? <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Dowdle's the RB1 on the week right now. Swift is the RB3, I think. So we both we both mentioned Swift in the starts of the week. We both knew it would be good. We were both very afraid to put our name next to De De DeAndre Swift in a permanent fashion, so he wasn't our official start. But the writing was on the wall. We said it should be a good week. They are relying on him in the same schedule that we uh, brought up about, he, you know, they've got the Manders, the Jaguars, the Cardinals coming up. That applies to Swift. So I think you're just going to need to stay in the flames with him. Ramondre Stevenson, 12 for 89 and a touchdown. The – ceremonial benching was just that Ramondre was back out there in <laughs> yeah. the second drive he had a great touchdown run he is their guy this was and like you need to not freak out this was like um there was a time when I was a kid that I got in trouble and just once uh, yeah this was the time okay. um where I got in trouble and uh my mom instructed my father to uh to spank me so he took me in the bathroom and he took his belt off and he folded the belt over and then he oh he made the popping he sound? made the popping sound and told me to yell <laughs> <laughs> so this so it's like yeah yeah did you did you yell oh yeah oh yeah oh, it was Dad. just like oh oh and then it was done and then, you know it was, that's great 
Uh, that's what happened with Ramondre <laughs> Stevenson here. It's like, you're getting the bitch. You got to protect <laughs> yourself. Uh, wink. I ain't <laughs> you know? no liar. I ain't no liar. We got If we preach ball security is job security, wink. Then, then I got to make sure I punish you. All right, punishment's oh over. Gosh, Coach, come yeah, on. he'll be okay. He'll be okay. Uh, Derrick Henry was doing very little, and then he was doing very a lot because he had a monster overtime run. James Cook got it done again. Josh Jacobs, nice to see him performing. 75% of snaps, that one was important because I, I was starting to get curious on that um, uh, Emmanuel Wilson kind of split. Yeah, so. I mean, it, it, it was – it was good to see Jacobs getting it done. They got the win. Chuba, almost 100 yards rushing again. He had a rushing touchdown. He's been great, man. Chuba's been awesome. Um, Trey Sermon slipped into the end zone on a drag down of Alec Pierce on the one, which is exactly what you need from a Trey Sermon start or a Cam Akers start. You wanted the goal line opportunity. Trey he Sermon. was actually not very good. Trey Sermon was not very good. Um, you know, If you take away the touchdown – 38 rushing yards, and despite six receptions, only 25 receiving yards. He he do, he didn't look good. Um, I'm curious. We, we don't this have – This was not Zach Moss from last year. Uh, No, no. But um, I would say someone who did look good and surprised me was Tyrone Tyler? Tracy. Oh, okay. Tyrone Tracy, 18 carries, 129 rushing yards. Um, Whoa. Yeah, I mean – You he, played him, didn't you? I did play him. Uh, it was it – was, Did it help? Yeah, it was very good. I mean, it didn't change the outcome. Didn't help enough. Right. But it was a helpful start. And he's... he was – how many more points did he score than Brees for your lineup? Oh, probably most all of them. I think Brees had only like probably five fantasy points. Six, I don't know. 6.1, brother. Brees did? Brees was your – I'm looking at your team right now, Jason, because oh, that's what everyone that. wants to hear. Don't do but that. But Tyrone Tracy, 15.3. Uh, In second place at your running back position, Alexander Madison at 10.6. And at third place, this bum, this guy that uh, you've got everywhere, Brees Hall. Yeah. I guess we're not in the duds yet. Kyron Williams scored again over 100 on the ground. Just you a don't machine. say. <laughs> just a machine. He will not score next week. I promise. I will bet you anything. I will not take that bet. I know the, the schedule. And okay. that is a very difficult team to score on. The bye? The bye week. Chase Brown, 46 on the ground, one through the air, a touchdown. That is Roshan got two touchdowns. He's the goal line right now, and he's getting it done. Although Swift got a goal line carry as well. Brian Robinson did nothing in this game. He played far fewer snaps than Austin Eckler. He lost a goal line carry to Jeremy McNichols, but he still scored twice. Also, why give Jeremy McNichols that? Why not let Eckler get the Eckler has because looked so dang good. On a, every time Austin Eckler touches the ball, I am just like, this is Austin Eckler of two, three, four years ago. McNichols got rewarded for what he did last week against Arizona. That's what that carry okay. was. That right. carry was Eckler's back, but we don't want to say we forgot about you. And that's kind of sad for the people that played the other two. I just think what's sad in bringing up Eckler is that someone who is as good as he is should be able to be started every week for fantasy, and you can't. Right. Yeah, no. It's that's, not fair. It's fair, although Brian Robinson dealing with an injury only in there 34% of the time. We'll see what happens in practice this week. Let's take a break, and we'll come back with our wide receiver studs. All right. Um, yeah, number one in the league right now in yards per carry. Tank Bigsby, number two, Austin Eckler. Yeah, yeah, and and you feel it, and that's to say nothing of his receiving work, which is also excellent. Number six hundred and fifty-two, Brees Hall. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. All right, Jamar Chase. Congrats on winning your week. Ten for one ninety-three and two. Uh, this is why you drafted him where you drafted him is because he has this in him. The last two weeks have been incredible. Drake Lennon and Darnell Mooney on Thursday night. We uh, we saw 13 and 16 targets. It's nice to know that that can happen. They got Carolina coming up. Yeah. Yeah, baby. DJ Moore, five for 105 and two. He this looked, was the first time we saw the offense do things that made us excited. And that was Carolina this last week. So, you know, uh, t TBD, uh, you're, you're starting DJ Moore every single week. But it's nice to know that you can still have these games uh, with Caleb Williams. T. Higgins, two touchdowns, 9 for 83, looked great, 14 targets. This really, Mike not being here this morning, a lot of victory laps he could take. The T. Higgins one, the Dowdle one, mm -hmm. um, but he, you yeah. know, it's a, one, it's a limited time offer and he's not here. Yeah, you can't take the lap tomorrow. No. 
Goodness, no. Statute of limitations. Yeah. Uh, Garrett Wilson is another one. 22 targets. 22. 13 for 101. I mean, that's not a great catch percentage. I, that, that's what's so funny is, like, he has – I'm pretty sure it, it, for however long his career has been, he leads the history of the NFL in, in targets. He has always had an absolute boatload of targets. I don't know if he just is the squeakiest of all wheels. I don't think so. Or whatever it is. No. But <clears throat> he still – he had a great game, 13 for a 101 and a touchdown. Monstrous, great performance. But on 22 targets, I feel like you should you should have more than this. It was a great game. We'll call it that. Darius Slayton, 8 for 122 and 1. Slayton became viable. We brought it up because of the injury to Malik Neighbors. And if Neighbors is back, he will fade back into the mist. Alec Pierce, uh, 3 for 134 and 1. Two deep catches that made his day yeah the Slayton always and, a chance to do that Slayton and Pierce those are those are probably not people that you picked up or started in your redraft leagues but that we they were mentioned as uh our official DFS dart throws on the DFS pass in the podcast so if you're listening over there and playing DFS those are those are uh slate busters Mike Evans uh two touchdowns on Thursday night football your start of the week Brian Thomas Jr who we were hungry for more for as well five for 122 and one had the big play on Looks pace, awesome. On just, pace for 75 catches, 1,350 yards, and 10 touchdowns. He really, really, really looks like an alpha wide receiver in the NFL. Brandon Ayuk, finally, 8 for 147 on 12 targets. You couldn't sit him against Arizona, which was nice because if it had been a better matchup, like a, you know, not Arizona's defense, I think people would have been, more of them would have had him on his bench. Right. On their bench. Yeah. He was he was very good. It's nice when you start with a 50-yard reception and you're just like, oh, okay, all right, we're back. And then the game winner last night in the football game that spanned two days. <laughs> in fact, Dak was the first quarterback in history to throw an interception in the same game across two days, one per day. Wow. Uh, Jalen Tolbert, 10 targets, 7 for 87 and a touchdown, outperformed CeeDee Lamb in this game. Has the Detroit run funnel coming up? Like Dowdle, Dowdle against Detroit, I think we're throwing the football. So I think next week you're going to have bye weeks for, you know, Waddle and Hill and those guys. You know, this is an opportunity for Jalen Tolbert. He has looked the part. He's the one who got all the reps when CeeDee Lamb missed camp. What are you going to tell people to do with Dowdle this week? Because they just played a very difficult run defense in the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, I and think people, was awesome. most people are in the position where they have to get a running back in there, but we'll see what the bye week looks like. And he's probably a flex play. What do you think? I mean, you I, I mean, it sounded if, like you didn't believe me. If you've been, if you've been waiting on him, I, you, you probably need to start him. I mean, it, it, the performance at the very least, uh, says that they will rely on him again next week. Now it's still a difficult matchup against Detroit. But the work should be there. My uh, my son's been struggling. He's in a, a new league. He played with some friends in high school. Mm -hmm. Drafted by himself. This is the the, yeah. the son who took Brian Robinson, Instead who of once Bichon. again outperformed Bijan. Oh my god! Five weeks in a row. Um, Wait, is it five <laughs> weeks in a row every single week? That can't be right. It's got to be close. I bet you Kyle can figure that how out. How funny that when you take the wrong B Robinson. It was the right B. Robinson. That says that's pretty much fantasy football. Hope that's not true by the end of the year. So Brian Robinson right now, by the way, running back six, 73 fantasy points on the year. B. John Robinson, on the other hand, the running back 22 with 58 fantasy points on the year. And looking at this, yes, every week. But, okay, week three, B. John was the running back 17 and Brian Robinson was 22. Oh, smoked him. There you go. All right, Tucker Craft, your start of the week. That was delicious. Two yeah. touchdowns, four for 88. I've already seen the questions coming in like, Sam Laporta or Tucker Craft next week? Wow. And what's your answer? It's probably Laporta. I mean, we 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 don't chase the – but, I mean, Craft is playable Kraft, and he's looked good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree with you if it's someone like Laporta, but – I mean, if you've got Andrews or, oh, yeah. you know, if you've been dealing with um, all the, the injury bug, if you picked up Kraft, I would just hold on to him and keep rolling him because he was, he was um, 
you know, had 37 yards week one, what play, but the snaps and the routes were there. He didn't do much when Love was hurt, but in the two games back with Love, he's the tight end two last week and currently sitting as the tight end one this week. Yeah, I mean, maybe you stay in those flames, even if you're dealing with the Laporta decision, because Dobbs was out. Uh, we already have the injury to Watson. Wicks can't catch. Talk about that in a yeah. minute. Musgrave's out due to injury, so Kraft is viable. Brock Bowers, beautiful, 8 for 97 and a touchdown. Should have had two. If you saw the play that they Sertan picked sixth, well, easy little throw and catch to Brock Bowers for a touchdown. Kittle, 8 for 64 and 1. Great game. 12 targets. Uh, Kittle's been very been, good. Kittle's been awesome. Yeah. And then uh, everybody not named Mark Andrews. Isaiah Likely had two touchdowns. Oh, that's what I was going to say. My son's team, I thought he's 0 3. And I was like, L let me help you. He hasn't been asking for help. I was like, let me help your roster. Sure. I was like, he's been just jamming Isaiah Likely in there every week. Oh, you got to take him out. And I was like, I got to get this dude out. Two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Now, to be fair, 13 yards, but still got two touchdowns. Charlie Kohler, three for 64 and a touchdown. And then Mark Andrews, four for 55. 55! Also should have scored in this game. Yeah. Kind of, a, kind of a bad throw to him on the outside and didn't get into the end zone. But he is just a dart throw play right now. He is a... Let's hope and pray. And he dropped his first target again. Looked like he was going to get oh, goose. Got it, involved at the end. It was the last two weeks, one target, no reception, goose. And then we're like going into the deep in the third quarter or something where it was he, he had one target, no reception. I was like, oh, my goodness. I mean, this was seven fantasy points where we're happy with Mark Andrews. So that's not where you were. He, he's in a and couple of my And they scored 41 points. He, he's, uh, he's in a couple of my leagues. I started him in, in, in two-thirds of them. I'm thrilled with that seven and a half. I was, I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I, I imagine you are. Yeah. Dom Perignon popped the top. Oh, I was yeah. like, this is, yeah. this seven is a celebration. A All right. Let's talk some duds. Pooped in his big boy pants. Well, Josh Allen's got big boy pants. It and they're full of doo-doo. It didn't work out. And Brock Purdy. A lot of people started Brock Purdy this week against Arizona. 19 for 35, just one touchdown, two picks. He was my quarterback in our DraftKings lineup. I still won, uh, thanks to the rest of the lineup, but uh, Purdy pretty much sucked. Yeah, and then uh, the big boy pants, people were fitting him. He had seen a Taylor. He was actually sliding them on, and then Sam Darnold, oh, while they were being put on. Yeah, ruined them. Ruined, ruined those them. pants. He ruined them. Um, so this yeah. is not good. Uh, I, losing Aaron Jones hurt? They, they've got a bye week coming up now. Uh, the Vikings do. Then they come back against Detroit. I will certainly start Sam Darnold off a bye in Detroit. It was a or at home against Detroit. For fantasy purposes, it was a pumpkin. It yes. was a pumpkin game. Yes. Running backs: Brees Hall, nine for twenty-three. I, I will say this: the he had seventy-four percent of the snaps, which was good because Braylon Allen is a problem. You know, he's he's getting involved and he looks good in his own right. But the behind-the-scenes metrics said Brees is still the one that they're trying to utilize. Their offensive line was terrible. And Minnesota is a very good run defense. Here's – here's the, this next week will be a really important week for Brees Hall. It's Buffalo. Mm -hmm. He struggles against the run. But I, I just want to point this out. Like, the offensive line's not getting – they're not, like, trading for a new one this, this week. Right. He, in three of – I'm sorry, in four of five games – He's sub 3-5 a carry. So the last three, 3.4, 0. 0.4, and 2.6. So he's not making a lot of his opportunities. Two for 14, three for 14 in the passing game. They're not, thro they're not throwing the ball to him the way, the way that they were. Like he was such a better fantasy asset last year with Zach Wilson. For sure. For sure. So, so do, do you she, think if are – you, are you, what are you thinking about that knee and ankle injury for Aaron Rodgers? You like get the backup in there, check it down to Brees. I I don't know, man. I think Brees is just a I, change I, expectation situation. Like, I think there are a lot of people that would never trade him because they drafted him where they drafted. Him. Makes and sense. now you can think about trading him. Like, you know, I know I was I was trolling you with offers, and this is not a setup for you to trade me Brees Hall because I no longer don't want, worry. I no I longer won't. I no longer want him. But 
there were there were times, you know, another great week from we didn't mention him. James Conner was amazing. He's so good. He went up against San Francisco. Concrete. Yeah, <laughs> they keep calling him concrete on the on the broadcast or like Mark uh, Sanchez did it. Yeah, he made this name up from nothing. Yeah, I've never nobody's heard him ever called, called concrete, him concrete before. But it's great. It, now we just yell concrete every time he. But James Conner has been incredible. He's been one of the most consistent running backs. But you can start to talk about conversations about Connor, about Brian Robinson Jr. Like Brees should not be untouchable. That's my only PSA to the world. Like he should. You could be trading. I think people would trade for him at near number two pick value, and you might get RB thirteen the rest of the year, RB fifteen rest of the year, and you know that would. Do you feel the same way about Bijan? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Who are you more? Even Mar who even are Travis you, Etienne. Who are you more confident in? Rest of season, Brees or Bijan? Bijan, I think I think so. Better looked better on his touches. Better offensive confidence right now. And when the going gets tough, Aaron Rodgers is just going to take over the you know snap and chuck system. I mean, twenty two targets for Garrett Wilson. Maybe you should have thrown it to Brees Hall. Yeah. Uh, Zach Moss, very terrible game. Chase Brown looked so much more explosive in this game. Jerome Ford. Disappeared, tons of form and snaps. And wide receiver, it's not looked good with Marvin Harrison. No. So I want to bring his name up because seven more targets, only two catches on those targets. His catch What's his catch rate yeah. on the year? Because it, Take he, a guess. It's got to be sub 50%. 49%. Wow. So 35 targets, 17 catches. They're not in sync. And, and what's crazy is you look at Michael Wilson – Go pull up Michael Wilson's catch percentage because it's the same quarterback. Yes. And obviously they're running different types of routes, but really not I mean, Wilson's, that different Wilson's type. been down the field. I mean, the catch percentage for Wilson, 73%. Yeah, and Marvin Harrison, um, I, I love that he's had the touchdowns. He still had some, uh, you know, he had a big important play towards the end of the game to yeah, help. Yeah, fourth down conversion. Yeah, to, to help bring it home for the Cardinals, but – Something's something's off. I mean, I will say this: just eyeball test. Brian Thomas Jr. at this stage right now looks way better than Marvin Harrison on the NFL field. It's, Malik it's, Neighbors is obviously looks definitely way better neighbors. on the field. Yeah, Harrison's situation is tough. He's at sixteen point four catch, so they are down the field more. Wilson is uh, Michael Wilson's at eleven, so like obviously you're going to have a catch percentage difference when you're targeting people down the field more often and taking shots. Like when Kyler's in trouble, he'll just throw it up. But I have not seen Marvin Harrison make an impressive contested catch outside of the back of the end zone touchdown against the Rams. On 35 right. targets, he is not – the 50-50 balls he's not coming up with right now. And yeah, and so he, it, it's just something to monitor. It's, he, he's a rookie. Mm -hmm. He's a rookie. He's going to get better. better. Uh, I think the expectations for someone like him were so extravagantly high that when you just see him being a good rookie and not like the best rookie of all time, we're super disappointed. What do you think he is on the year? Wide receiver 20. Close. 17. Okay. All right. Uh, Debo in the same game disappeared. Oh, my gosh. Debo was, was non-existent. I mean, the for, the 49ers really struggled. They, 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 uh, they lost at home. They're having... Red zone woes. Uh, if you didn't watch the game, they you hear lost that? their. Did you hear that? By the way, Falcon. They, they lost Falcon. Their they, the 49ers lost at home. Did you hear that? To the right Cardinals. There. To the Cardinals of all teams. How are uh, you feeling about that? I noticed a striking lack of. Uh, Wait, where's all paraphernalia. your Niner, Where's all your Niners gear? Oh my gosh! Why aren't I, you wearing Niners? You gear? forgot all of it. I'm gonna go cry again. Thanks. Okay. Now well, you, you have should. you have not done well in the NFC West right now, right. which is. Your division, yeah. Um, they lost to the Rams. They lost to the Cardinals. Now, now you go on the road to play Seattle. Did you know that you do that in a short week? That it's Thursday night football. If we lose to the Seahawks on Thursday, I won't be here Friday. Because we'll fire you. No for... diarrhea. Yeah. Diarrhea. All right. Um, just letting you know, if you lose, you follow that up with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, this is good. So... Cardinals could take that division. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, DK Metcalf, four four. Wow, we got a lot of these. He fumbled. Uh, he'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, we had Jordan Addison. They kept trying to get him the football. The, the secondary for the Jets, in particular, not Sauce, but uh, who's on the other side? Kyle, remind me. Reed? DJ Reed. DJ Reed looked great in this game. 
And so, ironically, he was the one shutting down Jordan Addison. Uh, Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett. Yep. That was the sound. A couple of farts. It's very difficult to throw on Chicago. You can run on them, but you cannot. It, they're, they are one of those uh, funnel teams we talked about. They're a run funnel. Here's a conversation. It's not, I don't think it's going to happen for George Pickens. No? In the current environment. No. George Pickens doesn't have – so right now George Pickens is giving you a usable game 35% of the time over his last 17 games played. This year, you would have been happy you started him maybe twice, and neither of those games were top 15. So this So week, you're just putting him in the, in the matchup category? I'm putting him in the matchup category. I'm putting him in the if they switch the quarterback category. I'm putting him in the – I said it before the week. I would try to trade him because of the fact that they're so deeply – like the, the the rumors are not stopping with Pittsburgh and Devontae Adams. Right. The snap count for – I don't know if you saw this. I did. Pickens' snap count was reduced for one of the most comical reasonings <laughs> that you've heard from Mike Tomlin, which maybe it's fine and right, but it's not fine and right for all the other elite wide receivers in football – they gave him fifty six percent of snaps because they wanted more. They wanted more high level play on the snaps he's in there. Yeah, I I understand what he's saying, and I I understand what you're saying. Like, there's a lot of wide receivers out there. The best of the best wide receivers don't need to take drives off and be limited on snaps because they get tired. And if that's happening to George Pickens, that's a problem. But that was intentional. They intentionally limited his snaps, and their goal was to maximize production. It sounds backwards, and it didn't work. No, it did not. Two for 29 in a game this year. Three for 26 last night. He is a, like, if you have Mooney, or how do you not play Mooney? I mean, ahead right, of George Pickens. Right now, Mooney just looks like an every week start. And then how uh, Jalen Tolbert this week, or uh, George Pickens. I would play Pickens there. The The matchup is, you know, against the Raiders. I, I, would, I would do that. Okay. Because um, you want, I mean, one big play. But Let's talk about uh, the guy that I think is the, the biggest uh, disappointment. The biggest disappointment of the week is Dontavian Wicks. Dontavian Wicks was the biggest fab spend. The everybody who got him spent a ton. Meaning but Jason, they needed seven him. targets. He must have delivered. He delivered the ball to the ground. He's a really good wide receiver. Technically, at getting open. Yeah. At running routes, he's. Uh, He's got the size. He's he's prototypical. You know, six one, two hundred five. Um, he is a good wide receiver. He's got one issue, and it's a big one. He's not good at catching. No, he needs to be able to catch it. He's not a good catcher, and so I think like he's got to have the money to buy a jugs machine, right? Yeah, he's. Probably, or he's, I'll bet they have him. I'll probably, bet the Packers they probably have him got him for sure. So I would just the receiver part of the receiver is really where he's. Struggling. And and the thing is, is th they're this, not routers. This wasn't just this last week. So last week, he was the wide receiver three. Okay. He was five for 78, two touchdowns, monstrous performance. That's why people picked him up and the opportunity with Dobbs being out and Christian Watson being out. Last but week. What did we watch? He, we went back and watched yeah. his film. And he's open and he's earning targets. But he dropped. So many passes last week. We just forgave it because he got two touchdowns. I think he was one for the first seven targets last week. Not on the same page. It was Kraft this week, and Jaden Reed. So seven targets worked. Process worked. The opportunity was there. He beat people down the field, and, and he got the target and earned it. Everything was perfect except he just, just didn't close didn't the, close his hands on the football. Close the hands on the they, he missed the the most important part of the receiving. How, closing. How, how happy was Dobbs every time that, you know, his replacement comes in and drops the ball? Because he's out there just, you know, he was this just, disappointed with his targets. This is why, this is why Jaden Reed was the story of the offseason. And it wasn't, it, literally, if you can project everything that happened so far this year, we it was talked about. Christian Watson's injury prone. Is uh -huh. he playing football? Nope. Romeo Dobbs, is he he seems unnecessary to the offense. He's so unnecessary, he just skipped practice because he's mad about it. Mm -hmm. And then Dontavian Wicks is just a super talented, yeah. but he's a backup for a reason. He was not already the starter. I 
you know, I think bright days are ahead for Dontavian Wicks. The the targets were there. I'm not going to go away from him. I'm going to start him next week against Arizona because uh, he is going to catch the ball eventually when you get seven targets and everything else is there. But your point is you were saying all offseason just the best wide receiver on the team is Jaden Reed. Yep. Uh, you were pretty bullish on that, and it, and it just you know seems where, so true. It's not the only situation that was stuck in the mire that was the best man rose to the top, Nico Collins in Houston, because Tank Dell's another conversation. Tank yeah. Dell right now is not playable. Tank Dell had Nico Collins knocked out of this game, you know, and, and Tank Dell put up four for 38. Monday, Ponday submissions were very Tank Dell, Stank Dell, you know, focused. And I really wanted you to rattle off more. It felt like you, I had, do you have were going some, on I do a have list some more, but I, I just feel like I don't want to draw – Sure. Like Tank Dell's no, a very talented receiver, but it's been it's but been it was bad. it was and, Nico a whole it was Nico all along. And if Nico is gone this week, what do you do? I would play Tank Dell over Dontavian Wicks if if Nico was out. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I look, I you said you'd play Wicks. Wicks is not a must play for me this week. He's a maybe play. He's a flex. What are my other options? Like I'd play Mooney over him. The fact Dobbs yeah. would be back out there. Like, Dobbs is coming back. So, like, the plan is he's missing this game and coming back, but it's Arizona. We just saw IU go crazy against them. It's a scary play. I'd play, I, I probably play Wicks over Pickens. Okay. Wicks and Pickens. It, it's, here, here we are. Keenan Allen and Adunze were not the featured targets in Chicago. Cortland Sutton, despite all the targets on the year, terrible game. And then at tight end, Dalton Kincaid. They need him. They need him so bad, and I'm I'm starting to question the talent. Well, Allen missed him on what would have been about a 70-yard touchdown in this game. It was just a miss. Uh, I mean, we talked about it at the top with Josh Allen. He looked atrocious He in completed the game. 9 of 30 passes. This was not a Dalton Kincaid problem. Yeah, 30% of his passes completed. That's impossible. And but you don't have anybody to take the pressure off of him. Yeah. And and regardless of him not being evaluated for a concussion, he probably had one, probably has one, and he's probably going to play next week. I don't know. That's scary. The Jets next week, you know, it always looks like Kincaid's supposed to have a game. Well, they need him. I mean, that's the thing. With Khalil Shakir out, who apparently is the engine that makes the Bills work, um, they have to have someone else step up. Keon Coleman is not a good separator. He he's gonna have his touchdowns, uh, you know, his fifty fifty balls and the and the big play of uh, you know occasionally. As a rookie, that's who he is. I'm not saying he can't develop into more, but right now he is not. He he's not a, a go to every down wide receiver who's just gonna get open. That's not even what he did in college. So who they need more than anyone is. Stephon Dal Diggs. Is, <laughs> sure. Is, I mean, yeah, th throw out Devontae Adams. That's who they need. Um, but they need Dalton Kincaid to step up and just rise up and put the offense on his shoulders, and I don't know that he's capable. Six targets you'd be really happy about, but the two catches, pretty pretty terrible. I mean, his his target pace on the year, what do we think that is? Uh, it's not what you projected. And no, what I project. Uh I would guess eighty. Eighty one. Okay. Your your guessing today is you're guessing at a better hit rate than Harrison's catch rate. You know what I mean? Right. Like your 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 Will Michael Wilson level. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm guessing it better than a Michael Wilson level. And then the Muth got loose, like let the ball get loose on the ground. Yeah, he did get a touchdown, which was great, but when most of your fantasy points come via a touchdown and then you fumble, you lose some of those fantasy points. All right, waivers day tomorrow, uh, Jason. It'll be a big one. We've got streaming quarterbacks to talk about, a fantasy draft redo on Wednesday, matchups, the wheel of shame. It's not going to be me. Oh, it's not going to be me. Nope, nope. It's uh, <gasps> nope, not going to be you, Jay. All right, Mike. Mike gets to walk into the, to the, you know, gets to dance with Dowdle and then spin that wheel. That'll be a fun Friday. I, yeah, I'm excited. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Check out jointhefoot.com. If you want a little extra, want to support the independent podcast, and uh, shout out to the deucers over there. Thanks, guys. Go Cardinals. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.